according to a very well known scripture in Acts 1 verse 8 but you will now there's the disciples waiting and Jesus was going to heaven now and all they knew was walking with Jesus so if Jesus did this they did that they did as Jesus because Jesus says come and follow me and I'll make you disciples fishers of men amen so but you will receive power now they were worried who are we gonna what are we gonna do now because remember Old Testament only the prophets kings and 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 and, and um, had the Holy Spirit living talking to them amen the other people listen and follow the prophets and the kings amen so but the, what happened you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on who on you okay when the Holy and you will be my witnesses where in Jerusalem sorry that's wrong in Kaitaya in Kaitaya and in all of the Northland in Judea and then Samaria then the North Island and then Africa and America and whatever hallelujah can I get an amen? amen so don't tell me you you are a missionary and you want to go to China well if you if you haven't reached your neighbor yet there's a problem that was for free it's not part of the sermon so <clears throat> you know we come can I can I ask uh, Wiener, will you get me a, a bread pan in the kitchen please yes yes okay. thank you hallelujah. okay there's yeah. hallelujah <clears throat> you know years ago we we when you type today when I type all of these I lie I just copy it and I paste it and I press a button and it printed this this uh, the scripture the rest I type one finger at a time but I remember my wife was a typist and she will type grr, 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 but everything goes and if she types too fast everything cross remember the youngsters world but hallelujah so grr, 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 and things happen that way and uh, and um, uh, uh, when she's finished and there's a mistake oh she had to retype the whole letter but then later they were clever they bring out white stuff that you can paint on but if the word is wrong she can't paint out her own word there will be a gap no a bread pan pan <laughs> what you bake the bread in <laughs> thank you <laughs> hallelujah <clears throat> let me let me get back so so then later they have a thing that you can press a thing and it will lift up and then you can press the same thing and it will take out the letter it, it was called I think to correct her something like that but these days you type and then you have a speller, spelling checker and they check it and that's why my writing sometimes look much better than my speaking because Google haven't checked it but this morning I want to challenge you God knew before creation what I was going to say this morning Amen. God has prepared the land for this flock Amen. the seed that's going to come out thank you my sister thank you thank you hallelujah <laughs> the seed that's going to come out this morning is prepared for this land that's why we as a church must remember never sleep in if it's time for church why because it's okay if you lose out but what about me because we are a body Amen. you are part of this body I know all the sisters here think they the head but you're wrong God's the head <laughs> no that was you are part of a body and you have a responsibility towards the body and in these times we're moving into now it's going to get more adamant how we're going to need each other 
Have you seen the lovely picture on front of the, uh, the newsletter? Thank you, Gwena, for compiling it. She do it every week, and I just mess it up. And uh, but thank you. So I want to carry on this morning with not the typewriter story, but the modern life and how we play our life as a game or how we live our life as a reality. Now when you have a game, all the, the sermon notes is on the back of your newsletter, please go and study it at home. When you are in a game, there's a goal. You need to, to have a goal, otherwise there's no game. I mean, if I just throw a, a ball up here and well, everybody says, what are we doing? But if I put two goalposts up opposite, all of a sudden, things are going to happen. So there, there must be a goal. And that's the same with us as Christians. There must be a goal. There must be a purpose. Why do you, whoever play rugby or cricket now, who, why are they winning? Because the purpose is to become world champions. There must be an attitude playing a game. If you have the attitude of a loser, guess what will you be? A loser. That's it. Now God didn't make us winners or losers. He made us choosers. Let's go. The last thing, you know, when you have a game, there must be a plan, there must be a method. How are we going to do it? How are we going to outplay the uh, Indians or the whatever you call the teams or the Springboks or the All Blacks or the whatever? How are we going to, what is their plan? And we have a method to win them today. Now, I say again, if you don't have rules, written rules how will you know when somebody is cheating you see if there's no written rules how will you know somebody is cheating now church it's the same thing with us you see we have a written word we have a logos word and we don't use the letter because the letter kills but we let the Spirit manifest in us because we heard over the last few years that we represent God's righteousness in Christ on earth. Amen. That's who we are. We are not here because we Baptists or we Anglicans or we uh, always say Willigans. No, no, we are here because we are Christians and we are a body that love each other and that care for each other. Yes. I'm going to get to that later. <clears throat> now, I want to ask you, this is a big bread pan, but guess what the bread you know, if you, you put in first the flour and then the yeast and then the water and then the whatever and you mix it and then you let it stand and then it rise and then you butter this and then you put in the and then you put it in the oven at a certain degrees for a certain time. And then there is a bread being baked and it will come out of this form. Now, who want to take a guess for 10 bucks, what will the bread look like if I bake it in this, in this, uh, um, hello? What will it look like? Not a circle. <laughs> be square. You know what? Okay. It's easy. It will look like this. It will look like this. Now, <clears throat> the word says, I don't have to give of myself. I get filled by the Spirit and then I have overflowing that flows from Aaron's beard and that anointing that Raleigh people been rise up in Christ. Amen. 
That's what we need to do in God's life. But first, we need to get to a place where we are filled. Now, what is filled? Filled is not I go and I study all the letters. That's part. I study my word and I do the word. The, the, to be filled by the Holy Spirit is to walk by faith and not by sight. Let me get back to the word. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> are you... You see... In this man, if the bread in here comes out round, there's trickery. There's a problem. Now, if you are in Christ and you have an extra uh, arm that you pull the one arm bandit with when the pastor don't look, <laughs> then you got to look like the pan. If you have you see there's an extra 10 bucks and nobody's looking and you have an extra hand that doesn't look like Christ. Very practical word this morning. I haven't started yet. <laughs> Are we looking, acting, doing different than the world because we are made in the image of Christ and then when you are different the world might like you Ephesians people wait to be set alive one day well, Paul writes in Ephesians 2, verse 1, he says, Once you were dead, but now you are alive and declared not guilty in Christ. Who is that? Hello? It's us. Once you were dead, but the moment when God called you and you accepted Christ, you become a new creation. You are alive and well. That's you, church. It's us. You are raised up in Christ. You're not going to be raised up one day when the pie in the sky is coming. You are raised up in Christ. You are a new creation. Now listen, the reason why God has lifted you up, why He gave, give you a new life, uh, is, and the reason... Um, for that is so that you can display something but when you display that something the Christ likeness in you the righteousness of God the world won't like you they will oppose you I mean just think all of you guys if you're honest this morning before you were born again you would hate a white guy screaming like this or a black guy screaming like that or a pink guy screaming like that Listen what the word says, 1 John 3 verse 1. Look at how great a love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children, and we are. The reason the world does not know us is it didn't know Him. You see, it's easy to say, my silly neighbor, who he's a baby, he is. He, is he silly because you pinched his rank? Or is he silly because he sees the Christ in you and you are shining and you are beaming on him? And he's busy changing. Because at the moment we heard, the world is not the same anymore. And his dollar doesn't count anymore. And the whatever doesn't work anymore. Only Christ in us. Hallelujah. What is God's method with us? And I only start now, but I want to call the sermon this morning. Are we in or on the way? Are we in or are we? The way. 
Are you in the way? On the way? Or are you the way? Let's see what the word says. I want to read a prayer this morning. And I'm not going to tell you whose prayer it is. But I want you to listen to this man. Hear, listen, hear what is right, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Come on, church, this guy is praying. He says, hear what is right. So he's praying to God. He doesn't say, oh Lord, help me that I don't go and gamble anymore. No, no, he says, hear what is right, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer, for it does not come from lying lips. Wow. Let me carry on. May you decide in my favor. May your eyes see what is right. You have tested my heart. You have visited me during the night. You have tested me and have found nothing wrong. Listen, I have decided that my mouth will not sin. I have decided. This guy sounds very self-righteous. No, the word says, remind God about His word. Listen, I have decided my mouth shall not sin, not sin. As for the actions of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept myself from the paths of those who want to hurt others. My steps have followed your paths. My feet have not turned from them, from your paths. I have called you, O God, for you will answer me. Wow, why? Because Lord, hear what is right. Over my lips there's no lies. Listen, I've called your God. You will answer me. Listen to me and hear my words. Show your great loving kindness. You saved by your right hand the people that come to you for the help from those who hate me. Hallelujah, did we hear that you're not going to fit into the world? Did you hear you're going to be hated? Okay, listen. Keep me safe as you would your, uh, your own eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the sinful who fight against me, those who would kill me and are all around me. You see, sometimes we think, well, let's go and go and buy a farm and then uh, our church, this is our place, nobody's allowed in here. No, 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 you're supposed to be surrounded by those that hate you because you're shining the light. Let me get back to this man's prayer. <clears throat> Verse 10. They are, uh, you know, he said, they have closed their fat hearts to pity and their mouths speak with pride. They have followed every step and are all around us. They are watching for a way to bring us down to the ground. He is like a hungry lion. Oh, they are like a hungry lion. Um, uh, like a young lion hiding and waiting. Rise up, O Lord, stand against them. Bring him down. Save me from the sinful with your sword. O oh Lord, save me by your hand from such men. Their riches are in uh, this life. They what? Riches. Their riches are in this life. Oh, uh, 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 um, the knees have found it. Their riches is in this life. Uh, verse 14. O oh Lord, save me from, by your hand from such men. Their riches are in this life. Their stomach is full with what you have stored for them. Their children are filled. Let them leave some for their babies. Uh, 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 as, as for me, I will see you face your face in what is right and good. I will be happy to see you when I am awake. Now that, please go and read it. It's Psalm 17. It's David's prayer. Now remember, God set a table before David's enemies. He is walking and everybody want to kill him. Everybody, everybody want to destroy him. 
Church, listen, if you're not on that place yet, ask God to take you to that place. Don't go to that place because you have an attitude. Go to that place because you carry the light of God in you. David says, even when there's no food, I will look into you, God. I will look into you. You see, everything of flesh was secondary to David. <clears throat> now I can read our scripture part for today, and that's the same psalm, but I'm going to read in another translation. Psalm 17, verse 13 to 17. Arise, O Lord, stand up against them, and bring them to their knees. Rescue me from the wicked with your sword. By the power of your hand, O Lord, destroy those who look to this world for their reward. Can you see that there's a difference? You don't look to this world for your reward. They do. Um, but satisfy the hunger of your treasured ones. May their children have plenty, living in inheritance to their descendants. Because I am righteous. Because I'm what? I am righteous. Are you righteous because you do righteous works? No, you are righteous because Jesus declared you righteous. Amen. Okay. Uh, I'm righteous. I will see you. When I'm awake, I will see you face to face and be satisfied. So the first point I want to make this morning, the goal of life, we can go back to verse 15. He says, but I will see you, for your face in righteousness. When I'm awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. When, I, when I'm walking, I'm acting and, and displaying the righteousness of God because my whole desire, my life, is to be in Christ. If that's not your desire this morning, church, you need to make adjustments. If you just come to church this morning to fill that hour or to be to be soothed over, sorry, you're in the wrong church. Thank you, my sis. It's either amen or ouch. <laughs> Bring yourself to a place where you can see yourself in your tomorrow how how will i be able to see myself in my tomorrow where is god is god already in tomorrow god have no light with him so god is in the year 20 billion 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 whatever God, God knew everything. So if I want to know about my tomorrow, I need to start to see myself in Christ, to see myself in God. So the goal is to become face to face with God, looking like you see Him in a mirror. Now listen, church. In a spiritual mirror, if you go and stand in front of a spiritual mirror, who are you supposed to see? Christ. Christ. Hallelujah! The Christ in us! Now come on church, when Kataya is looking at us, who are they supposed to see? Christ. Christ. So what is the goal? Christ in us is our only hope of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for your excitement. We're getting there. Listen what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says, We, so we all, with unveiled faces, are reflecting the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory this is from the Lord who is the Spirit. Spirit. And where does the Spirit live? Do you agree you came into a dead building this morning? I mean, we this is not the church. This is the church. Wherever two or three gather in unity, 
praise God. Because I hear people quote the scripture that says, wherever two or three gather in His name, there is. No, and what about when you're all by yourself? Hello, when two or three, because the moment where there's two or three together, there's opportunity for discord. And God don't command the blessing where brothers don't dwell in unity. That was for free. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, we heard now that we, we don't have to cover our faces like Moses had to when God appeared. The, the, the veil has been torn between the Holy of Holies and the temple. We are the temple of God. So the veil has been torn and the righteousness of God has come upon us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the goal for us now is to start displaying that to the world. The purpose of the game of life. What is the purpose of the, of the game of life? Very, very short scripture, but very true for one, uh, Ephesians 5, 1. Listen what he says. The purpose. Therefore, be imitators of who? God. Of God as dearly loved children. Not as the South African rugby team. We are the world champions. We are better than you. No, no, no. When you are a Christian, you have no culture. You are either a, a, a Christian or you part of the world. Amen. You are born again. You are a new creation. Amen. Hello. So what are you displaying of God as dearly loved children? Now God don't have different folks, South African children and Maori and Pakia and pink and white and purple and green and Chinese and no seas and whatever. No, no, no. God have only blood washed born again children. Amen. Thank you for your excitement. Yes. That was also for free. So, let's look at the scripture. Now Peter writes, he says, Peter, I give you a new commandment. You are called, listen to this, to suffer for Christ. Anybody that will put their hand up when they have a call like that? Listen, church. We are not on this earth to make a living. Paul's word, or Peter's word, you are called to suffer. This flesh, if you display Christ, it will suffer. If it's not suffering, there's something wrong. Otherwise, I've got a black marker. Come and scratch the scriptures out of your Bible. I will give it to you. What should be your... We heard about the purpose. What should be your attitude about the game? What should be... I said in the beginning, if you are negative before the game, you will never win. What is your attitude? It must be the heart of a servant. You didn't come to be served. You come to serve. That's who you are. Church, that's who you're supposed to be. If this is, word is too hard for you this morning and you don't want it, you're welcome. Don't come back. That's the truth. I can give you a nice little word that sounds very good and that might fill all the chairs. But it won't be the truth. Listen, in, in Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom to many. It was foretold. Four, 700 years before the time it was prophesied. Hope you said so well this morning when she says the prophecies in God's word has all come in fulfillment. Listen what Isaiah 53 11 says. He will see uh, it out of his anguish and he will be satisfied with his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and he will carry their iniquities. How much 
much are you willing to suffer, church, for your neighbor? How much are you willing, when he said to you, shut up, to say, I bless you, man? What? You saying, what? <laughs> that's not you. I mean, that's the other churches. Yeah. It's important. Your attitude should be one of a servant. One willing to lay down his life. One willing to come to the place where David prayed. Where David prayed and, and, and we all heard about his prayer. A powerful prayer. Not a little, oh Lord, please, maybe give me. No, no, Lord, my lips have no lies over them. God says, remind me about my word. You see, we sang a song this morning and it's scriptural. And to a thousand generations, and to my children, and their children, and their children. Come on, church, if your children is out of line, remind God about His word. What's the method of the game of life? Let's turn to the Bible again, Colossians 3 verse 17. And please, I just scan over the scriptures. Go home and study it. Make your own study. Make it your own revelation. Amen. Amen. Listen. And whether you do or say, do it as a representative of, of the Lord Jesus giving thanks through him to God the Father so how do I give thanks for what Jesus did for me by representing God's righteousness on earth that's how I'm giving thanks you you can pray until kingdom come Lord I thank you know this way I thank you Lord for doing this for me I uh, I, yeah, Lord, I'm still in time for my overtime work. And luckily my boss paid me, Lord, so I can pray a bit then. <laughs> Giving thanks, doing, displaying the righteousness of Christ. That's how you give thanks. The, 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 be the representative of Christ on earth. Now there was years ago I was a representative and you know what's interesting? What does a, 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 a product look like? If, if I'm selling this, well I tell you I will polish it up, it won't look as bad as this church one. Um, I will polish it up and make sure it's got no, oh, there's a little dent in it, take the dent out and everything and, and put a nice wow and when I come I display the product and I said Man, I'm so glad today is your opportunity. You know what? Luck has fallen upon you this, this day. Man, this happened. Aren't you looking for a bread pan like this for years? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Wow, yeah, I thank you. Congratulations with your new bread pan. You see, I represent the bread pan. Now, if we are baked in the image of Jesus and by displaying the Jesus to my title. Amen. How do we do it? <laughs> I, I, is it time for church already? <laughs> oh, I don't feel like going. I, uh, I think, uh, oh, I got a headache. Oh, no, okay. Display. Uprighteous. You're in the game of life. Listen. Paul says, be you followers of Jesus like me. I want to challenge you this week. Come on, church. Let us go out and let us be. Let us be a Christ unto a lost world. And let us develop an attitude where I can go to God and say, Lord, I remind you about your word. Lord, no lying has gone over my lips. No unrighteous deeds. And when you become powerful, the devil will remind you about the wrong you've done. And as a New Testament believer, I say, thank you, devil. Go, oh, thank you, devil. Um, I thank you, thank you. And I fall down. I said, Father, the devil just remind me. I have done that. 
and forgive me, Father, forgive me. Oh Lord, I actually stole 10 bucks from mom. Oh yeah, mom. Mom, I stole 10 bucks. Here's your 10 bucks, mom. Do you want interest on it? Sorry, mom, forgive me. Can I pray with you, mom? Please forgive me in Jesus' name. And I'm free. I don't live in the Old Testament where I have to be thrown with stones. No, no. I have received grace. If I fall short, I pray and I'm declared not guilty. In Hebrews, the Hebrew writer says, Leaders, let your followers imitate in what you're doing. Let your followers imitate in what you're doing. You see, you can go to Bible school, you can study everything you want to, you can become priest, priest, pope, general, corporal, doctor, professor, whatever. You see, if you don't display the Christ-likeness, you're not worthy to be followed. All of Jesus' disciples at the end quitted and says, no. But when the Holy Spirit that we have come upon them, they all, except one, died for their faith. I finish. Well, are you in or are you the way? Are you in the way or are you the way? Let's turn to the Bible in, in Acts 9 verse 2. Are you a team player of the church of Jesus Christ? Not a religious institution. If you are, then you are infected. You are bad. When people see you come, they will move away from you. They will say, yes, that guy coming. We experience some of that now, but for different reasons. Acts 9 verse 2. Meanwhile, Saul, who was this? Saul, Saul before he became Paul, before God get hold of him. Did you have a name change? Yes, you were born again. You have a new creation, a new character, a new image. I mean, now Saul, meanwhile Saul was still breathing. Wow. You better put on your mask. Breathing threats and murder against who? The disciples of the Lord. They was Paul. And he was saying, whoa, whoa, listen what he did. Listen, listen. He went to the high priest and request letters from him to the synagogue in Damascus. To the institution in Damascus. Before Christ. An institution. Later, the saints brought Christ. Brought God into the body. Amen. So, I want to, priest, if you can give me a letter, I want to go into the synagogue and get rid of the church in the synagogue. I want to go and get rid of the different name. Let me carry on. Listen. Synagogue in Damascus. So that if I found any man or woman who belonged to the to the what? Way. To the way. Can you see a capital, capital W? Yeah. To the way. You see, it's a way of loving church. Don't tell me you believe. The devil also believe. But you don't do. That belong to the way. The, the way. Either men or women. 
he might bring them as what? Prisoners to Jerusalem. You see, priest, give me authority so that I can go and get the people of the way. You see, Paul writes in his letter, he's, he's on his way to prison. This is the same soul, but after he had uh, 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 the thing on with God on the Damascus Road, something happened with him. He changed. He had a changed name. Now that same Saul, or Paul now, uh, uh, he come and he says, he says, um, God is busy preparing a pulpit for me in prison. Hello? What attitude are you supposed to have playing the game of life? A godly attitude. Everything work for my good says the word. If my desire is Christ. Now they're going to put Paul in prison. For why? Because he's now a man of the way. He's not in the way. He is the way. He is in Christ. He's going to go to prison. Why will God do that? Guess why? Because there were many wares in church, if there's a word like that. Ah, there were many, many wares in prison. And they needed a leader, so God chose him. Are you willing to go? Church, the Kaitaya prison, the Far North prison, the North Island prison, New Zealand prison have a lot of people that's bound that don't know how to come free. Don't tell a little white lie so that you can escape. Walk in the truth and the truth will set us free. <coughs> Don't bend the rule. Remember the first Christians wasn't called believers. They were called the people of the way. God's way. Is that what you will be known for? One day when it's your time to report for duty in heaven. Well, God said to the other, stand aside. Here's my faithful servant coming, Anna. Here's the way coming. She displayed Christ to a lost world. How? 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 How should I do this? Other people must be able to see the love of God in you. They must be able to see. They must be able, church, to see the love we have for one another. I remember our first service after lockdown. We packed all the chairs apart, stacked them everywhere. But as the people came in, I can't believe they just grabbed each other and hugged and laughed and cried. And somebody tried to do the announcements, but they wouldn't sit down. Because they saw each other, there's a love for each other. What does the world need to see? How we help each other. How we isn't it interesting? We always want to help the world so that we can be seen. No. The world wants to see how we help each other. So that they will want to be part of the way. Are you willing to stand out this morning? 
to be called the people of the way? Or are you happy just to be called a Baptist? Or an Anglican? Or an Apostolic? Are you willing? We're going to share in the table today. That's opportunity. If you heard a, a word this morning and you know that you have missed the mark. You know that you missed the mark willfully. You know you disobey God. You know you don't live in, in, in righteousness. When you come to the table, Jesus says in Matthew 26, 26, He says, when you come together, remember what I have done for you. And celebrate what I have done for you. We heard this morning what He has done for us. For every one of us. If you have wasted that, well, this is the opportunity to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me that I don't display the righteousness of God on earth. Forgive me, Lord, that I don't trust and act upon your way. 